Hey everybody, in this video I'm gonna be walking you through my uh, thinking process while playing the Karokan against opponents that are roughly around 21-2200 uh, strength and uh, in the first game uh, you're gonna see how to get a quick win uh, against the ban of attack this time I was actually even getting it against the Fide Master after playing Naira F6 and then using a bit of a tricky line that can turn out to be quite deadly. In game 2 I'm gonna be showing you how to get uh, deadly mating construction while playing the Tartakover variation. In game 3 I'm gonna be showing you how to deal with uh, a little bit of a sideline when white goes for the bishop development on uh, move 3 which is a pretty common pattern especially for lower rated games and in games 4 things were about to become pretty wild because I just uh, used a pretty interesting king's indian setup and just uh, pushed the pawns trying to brutally checkmate my king and I'm gonna be showing you what you need to do in order to get your own counterplay before uh, white gets uh, any deadly initiative against your king. So yeah, with that being said, uh, you can pick uh, the game that you want by using the timestamps from the description. And without further ado, let's just jump uh, right into the action. Oh wow, we're playing a Fide Master. Look at this, how interesting. And he even gives us the golden opportunity to play the Karo Khan, so... Let's see if uh, our Karo Khan is solid enough to uh, yeah, resist against the pawn of attack. Pawn of attack of a, of a Fide Master. I'm gonna get the two knights. And he plays with knight f3 now. I'm gonna give you a bit of a secret line, guys. This is gonna be given in my uh, Scandinavian Gambit course because white can actually transpose back into the car if they want. And against this line, instead of Let's say the ultra analyzed boring bishop g4 main lines. I think a6 is quite uh, quite a cute idea. Goes for takes and queen b3. Now I'm thinking of this and I don't really remember what to play. I guess bishop e6 is not that effective. I don't really know why. <laughs> I mean, maybe knight g5. I can just play e6 here. I can also do knight takes on c3. Not bad. I really want to play bishop e6 though. Like knight g5, knight e4. That can't be bad, can it? There's queen a4 check, knight back. He takes on e6. It's kind of ugly. It's a pity I don't remember this uh, precise move order. Hmm. Do you guys think bishop e6 can still be playable after like uh, knight g5? Hard to say. Knight e4, queen a4, gotta go back. I I'm, I'm gonna play it. I I'm a crazy guy. I'm gonna play it. I don't know. If he plays bishop c4, that's losing. I know that much. I don't know about the other lines, though. Like, knight g5 is the only one that's kind of... Scaring the crap out of me, but other than knight g5, I think we should be good. Mm. Let's see. Knight d5, bishop takes on d5, queen b7 is not a problem, I think. Simply because of knight takes on d4. And... Yeah, if you manage to, like, make him uh, go back with a queen, that's obviously very nice. Oh, he takes? Wait a minute, isn't this just, like, knight a5? I thought we were, like, winning the queen there. I like, bishop b5 check? What? Wait a minute. Okay, I mean, that, that cannot be a good move for, like, many reasons. I think that's what he's, like... Betting on. He wants like bishop b5 there. But I mean, I can do this move and then the queen is literally trapped. There's also a four coming. The queen is literally just trapped there. Oh my god, guys. This is just going to be a free win against um, a Fide Master. Aren't you excited? How exciting, I know. So we have that move. He has like what? Bishop f4. What am I missing? 
That has to be the move. Okay, maybe this one is not bad either, but oh no, that has to be it. So he's gonna do bishop f4, like only move that I can see. So he gets c7 square. And then I'm gonna play like what? Oh, then I've got like rook a7 still. Yeah, yeah, no, that's like still winning. Let's do this. Has to be winning, I mean. According to all rules of chess, there's no way this is like now winning. You cannot take such pawns, simply. And, uh, yeah, actually it wouldn't be the first time I'm saying this during uh, today's session, but okay. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe your opponent will prove me wrong again. Queen getting trapped in panoff seems common if they get greedy. Well, especially against this a6 line, because otherwise the queen could like come back home, but it's like taking away one of the really most important squares. And okay, maybe I shouldn't be getting that hyped because we're playing against an opponent that has the nickname Old Guy 2. <laughs> I guess I should change mine in Old Guy 3, but that remains to be seen according to the result of this game. Maybe I could be old guy one. So, I don't know. Old guy soon. That's even better. <laughs> that is even uh, a better name right there. A thousand socks. That's a nice nickname uh, <laughs> as well. He's regretting the, the greed right now. Yeah, but now rook a7. Bishop c7, queen d7, what? Oh no, then he's got queen b6. Yeah, so now just rook a7, easy win. Bishop c7 only move, we take, he takes our queen, and then we've got uh, fork simply and uh, upper rook. Isn't it that the best? Or maybe bishop c7, queen takes and just have a piece. Which one is better, guys? I'm like, really struggling to decide. Both are like so tempting, it's crazy. Bishop c7 and then... Uh, do I take the rook or the free piece? I'm like not getting it. Maybe my knight will get trapped and then I'm gonna be only up in exchange. Tough decision, but I guess a pleasant decision to make. Hmm. Bishop c7 has to be the only move. I take bishop d8, knight c2, and knight a1. I think I'm gonna go for that just because um, I'm gonna be winning b2 pawn. Now he's gotta like move the bishop, but like bishop's trapped. Bishop's not going anywhere. And that's a check. That is gonna be hanging, and there is gonna be rook c2. So. King d3 knight before, we might actually be able to get away with this. That's like a bit unnecessary, but you see me. Patser sees a check and gives a check. That's what I'm gonna do. King e4, he's gonna play king e4. That's like a common pattern. I always lose when opponents play such king move. Okay, never mind, he just resigned. <laughs> All right, that was a win, but I don't know. Was like bishop e6 the right move there? I like couldn't really remember the queen b3 move order. It's kind of weird, especially when you're like writing a course about uh, this topic even. But um, uh, let's check it together. So we went there. When queen b3. Yeah, okay, bishop e6 first line, apparently. Could I remember what to do in case of this? Oh, so there is knight a5. Best line, what? Oh, yeah, I think I might uh, remember looking at this. Knight is... Um, can hardly recall it, to be honest. But I'm sure I've got this in the notes. Do you guys want to, like, check the notes right now and see whether we had this? All right, maybe I can just do that in a second. I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a peek inside of my uh, notes from the upcoming course. I think that's fair. 
just because you guys are here in the stream, giving me your time, I think maybe I can try to find it at least. Percy's in the car. It's actually in the Scandinavian Gambit, but we do co cover the pan off since it can be a transposition there. And I'm going to have a Karo Khan course uh, a little bit later in April next year. That's going to be separate to this though. So CD5, Queen, B3. Yeah, Bishop, E6 is the move in the nodes. And then I've got like uh, Knight, G5. Do you guys want to like uh, have a quick peek inside throughout the file? Okay, I'll just give you that, okay? I'll just, um, I'll just show it like real quick, okay? Let's... Uh, Look at this. This is how the file looks. So my line actually ends after uh, queen b3, bishop e6. I've got knight takes on d4 apparently. This seems to be best. I was actually wondering whether this position is fine, but it looks like we just get castle next. And uh, yeah, according to the dumb uh, annotator, while white is struggling to prove compensation for the pawn, we're going to castle next. So... That is that. <laughs> All right, that's what I had uh, related to this line. But um, of course, you know, I can remember none of that. So um, I can go for the next game. Mm, all right, looks like we are getting the black pieces and we've got a Serbian opponent that's 2100 going for Aggressive e4, but he's about to meet our Tartak over. Now, question is, are we going to get the pawn cube or not? Because we all know that's a forced win. But we'll see. Knight f3, so people still around 2100 uh, rating range. Notice that they're not playing the most, let's say, precise move order with c3. So they just commit to this, which is known to be harmless. Start with the bishop. Don't start with bishop g4. Yeah, very common uh, lower rated... Uh, Player mistake right there, because, um, you know, it's not like whenever you can, you have to pin the knight. First, we like to uh, get castle, then we do the pin. Or if they play h3, I'm going to see that this is going to end up uh, hurting him. I'm going to give a little bit of an ambitious prediction, but I would say we're going to win with the checkmating attack here. But we'll see, guys. Wouldn't be the first time I'm wrong. So... With this move, it's actually, we're going to get such a nice setup. It is absolutely insane. Guys, you have no idea. This is going to be like so deadly. I think we can just start right away with this. This is just, I already feel bad. There is no way for opponent to actually counter this idea. Oh my God, this is actually a bit annoying. He has to play c5 not to get mated. Yeah, and now just wins, I think. Uh, yeah, just knight h4 and we've got free win. See you guys. Easy win. Tartak over easy win. I told you we're going to get a checkmate. I saw that already when uh, I saw that uh, h3 move. So simple. He cannot take because of checkmate on h2. He cannot play g3 because that's a pretty goddamn uh, big fork <laughs> right there. And I think his only move is honestly just playing bishop e2. And then uh, after takes, take with a bishop. And I get to infiltrate. Still, I'm not necessarily seeing the checkmate yet, but that has to be winning, you know? When you get to infiltrate there, it's like, gotta be good. Hmm. Okay, what is actually like the final bro blow right there? So we trade knights, takes with the bishop, we infiltrate, king f1. I'm like thinking bishop takes on a3, but I don't quite like see the mate. I mean, there's bishop f4 if I want to wanna be a little bit annoying. I think we've got to play uh, play down that line. So just uh, take so we can give this check. And then I think bishop f4 is strong move. Because if he takes, then my rook uh, takes away the e2 square, the most important, and we can mate. So after bishop f4, it's hard for him to make a move. I can play king e2, but I guess that's not so great. Or at least I'm hoping it's not so great. Hmm. Also, maybe just f5, f4 is strong in this position because I'm trying to, like, move the bishop by force from there. Let's try to calculate it. f5, what if he plays king e2? Can I do f4? Yeah, I can. Because if he goes rook h1, I have fe3 and hit his queen. 
So I think f5 should be the move now, and that's just uh, winning on the spot. Like, he can play g3, but then I think f4 still. Bishop takes, he cannot do because of bishop h3, so I think f5 is best line now. Let's see. I might be wrong, but this definitely feels like uh, a win on the spot for black when they allow this uh, kind of thing. And this all happens because his pawn was already committed to h3. Uh, I hope I can uh, remember to show you why it was such an important detail that this specifically works against his pawn on h3. But uh, yeah, I'm sure the guys from the chat will remember and uh, let me know after the game. So yeah, f5. I have a simple threat. Just go f4 and win the bishop. g3 kind of only move against it, I guess, but still f4 and he cannot take... Uh, with a bishop has to take with a pawn and then uh well if that's not a winning position i don't know what it is i think just bishop takes on f4 and now king e2 not even working because if i take on e3 he can no longer take with the f1 so yeah now this is very good oh yeah he cannot take this because of bishop h3 mate and if he takes that way i've got bishop h3 yeah there's just mates guys look at this i told you it's gonna be a bishop checkmate in the tartar war how nice Look at this. This is beautiful. Very important. I sacrificed my pawn so now that the rook opens up since the bishop is no longer on e3. And now we just get a very nice checkmate. So, opponent resigns because only move was bishop g2, but I was about to take it and then that is simply a checkmate. So, main idea from this game don't play e4 because the Karo Khan is too strong. But besides that, uh, what made this work so well. It's really this pawn on h3, which may look like really annoying to a lot of players because, oh no, I cannot get my bishop to g4 anymore. That's like most uh, of the Tatakvar players thinking, yeah, just crying because they cannot get the bishop to g4. But in fact, that's a very nice uh, thing to see here because after we do this, imagine if the pawn was on h2, if we play like knight h4, he can always just play g3. I mean... Let's say with a bishop there, let's say he does like rook ad1. We play knight h4. He can easily play like g3 without like losing a pawn, which was like really important. So, yeah, that was basically it. h3 just makes g3 much harder for him. And like, okay, honestly, opponent really helped. Like, if he plays a bit better, as I was saying, like rook ad1, knight h4, he does g3 now, he's only losing a pawn, so he doesn't get made it. But still, for some reason, this computer thinks uh, the position is equal. This doesn't look like equal at all to me, but yeah, I guess <laughs> they've got kind of blame. Normally, this is just crashing. And uh, yeah, you cannot see the engine eval. Okay, okay, okay. I get that. Um, but yeah, like here, after bishop f1, they are like already lost. Oh, I was the one losing. Wait, what? <laughs> what is this clown fiesta? I was the one losing. I need to get my bishop developed first. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Oh, this is such a turnaround. Oh my god. Did you guys see this coming? Like knight h4 and I'm actually lost if he finds only move bishop f4. Forgot about the back cranker. Oh, that would have been wild. Yeah, like usually in all these lines, uh, obviously you like get the bishop developed to like f5 or somewhere, but... I was like, why bother develop the bishop when you can just mate him, you know? That was like kind of my thinking process, but, you know, obviously that's the answer. <laughs> hey, thank you for the prime, uh, Timber Kirk. Appreciate that. Thank you. Plot twist sub. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Why do you prefer bishop c7, queen d6 instead of uh, bishop e6, queen d7? Well, uh, yeah, no, I mean, the mechanic works the same, guys. It's just that, um, yeah, I was a bit, uh, it was a bit of a situational case where I need to do this, and if he plays rook ad1, he's lost after knight h4. Yeah, like, this is how this would normally happen, but I forgot about the, the back ranker for a second. I mean, it happens. <laughs> I mean, I just got excited for the attack. So it's easy to miss uh, that. 
And okay, yeah, like after that, at least uh, F5 was top line right there. And um, yeah, the rest was pretty straightforward. Just get the bishop, get the mate. Yo, Screamy, how are you, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for that. Why do I prefer bishop c7 instead of uh, bishop e6, queen d7? I mean, that's fine, but it's not like you're going to sack uh, on h3 anytime, you know? Sure, maybe sometimes, but I generally don't like my queen on d7. Maybe sometimes. I normally do queen c7. Let's say, um, yeah, I normally like to get it like this and then queen c8. That's how I normally do it. If I want to, like, play for bishop takes on h3 ideas, that would be, like, how I would try to set it up. Just getting all the pieces into the game. Yes, okay, you usually get the mate, I get that, but if they play bishop f1, you're never gonna sack in good conditions. That's the the thing. Still, black has good position normally when we get such setup, but... Um, of course, if they allow the sack, they're probably losing, but... Normally, I, I think they should, like, watch out for it at least. They normally don't in lower-rated games, that's why, you know, Tartakovar is even more... Um, uh, yeah, effective <laughs> than all the other lines that he can do against the classical knight c3. So, okay, guys, I think that was basically this game. I think we can go for the next one, right? Seeking for a new game. And we're facing a 2100 opponent and going for e4. He's like one game away from 2100, so he's probably like ultra focused right now. So. Gotta do the same and try uh, my best in defending this Karo Khan with a bishop on d3. I mean, you don't see that every day, do you? I'm just gonna take. Basically destroying the pawn center and now I'm gonna develop my knight while gaining a 10 point. Pawn steps back to f3, which is actually an interesting opening uh, against the French defense, which is my recommendation uh, in one of my... Uh, amazing e4 courses after bishop d3 de bishop takes knight f6 bishop f3 that's interesting because it's hard to develop that stupid french bishop but against the karo khan this seems to be less effective since i mean the bishop's like already eyeballing this pawn on c6 so common mistake that i've noticed in my students game white plays bishop d3 normally here and you just have a free pawn want to play it a bit better by going to f3 and all right, how do we play this? I'm like pretty sure e5 could be an alternative, but no way to risk it. Like bishop f5 is the easy move. And I think I'm just going to do that. No need to fianchiaro. I'll just get my bishop out. Probably e6, bishop d6. Yeah, I'll just try to speed up a little bit in like the upcoming moves because I already lost a minute by explaining uh, some super useless opening details. And, you know, it's just a bad habit that I usually have. So... Sorry, you guys have to listen through this, but um, I, sometimes I just cannot stop it. So, h4. Okay. Either we push one step or we go h5. I think here h5 is definitely like a little bit better. I mean, hard to tell. Both are really good, but I just like to make it clear, you know. I, I think whenever you're like meeting somebody new, it's like good to show your intentions and... Make it clear, not let anything to interpret it. So that's why I played h5. And I'm going to go knight d5, take it back with a pawn. And you can just develop. Gain a tempo, expecting c3. And if I play bishop to d6, then bishop takes on d5. Maybe a problem. So I really want to watch out for that. And I think in order to do so... Okay, I might actually got myself uh, trapped in a bit of a slightly awkward spot. It's a bit weird, but uh, yeah, I don't really see where to castle yet. Um, maybe we don't have to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who said you're supposed to even castle in 2022? That person must be dumb. Uh, okay. I can do queen e7 long castle, but is that, like, really what I want to do with my life? I don't know. That, that feels, like... Feels iffy. Okay, I think, uh... 
Yeah, bishop f5, g6. That doesn't feel right. Rook c8, bishop e7. I shouldn't be really sleeping in this position, but I feel like it's super important. Like, I, I could make knight e7 a move, but then knight h3 is something that kind of bothers me. Bishop f5, he takes that pawn, which I really don't like. I don't want to give away free pawns. Uh, okay. Queen a5. I play queen a5. Weirdest move that I've played in, in really, like, a long time, but... I'm trying to, like, induce some weakening and provoking that. That was threatening, obviously, the cheap trick, but that was not, like, the main point of it. Hope you believe it. Uh, okay, queen b6. Can I do that? Still bishop d5. That's a no-no. Let's do rook c8. In case he castles, there's a bomb exploding on d4. So, c4, still, I don't really believe in that move because it's terribly weakening d4. But I can maybe just go bishop to b4. And b4, I think I can just step back if I really want to. So like this. And b5, knight a5. Uh, okay. Knight over there. How much are we in trouble? Do we have bishop takes b4, knight e4? I think we've got to go for that. I think we've got to play for tricks now. Take that. There's no check. There's like a fork incoming. Opponent took in a second, so maybe not sure that was like the best time management by him. Like, uh, okay, this is a thing. And then bishop e4, just like winning the rook rather than knight c2 and then giving away two pieces. So I think we prefer that. And I just have to like basically blitz it out from this point, more or less. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing in this game. Like, Playing queen a5 there, it definitely feels a little bit extreme. Maybe it was just better instead of h5 to go h6. We'll check it in the analysis tab, but... Some games may be like that, and... Your beloved uh, streamer will uh, do weird things uh, occasionally, okay? Please don't judge me for that, but uh, I really... Yeah. Found myself in a very awkward spot. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe I was just overthinking it usually the case but anyways focus on this queen b6 queen b5 i don't care about his knight we're up a full rook no 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 we're up an exchange guys i'm not like the uh i'm usually not like the uh, smartest guy in the room but I'm pretty sure we're not up a rook here I mean, now we are. Like, who who said it was right? I mean, who said it is like seeing in the future. <laughs> that was a goddamn good call right there. But uh, in the first place, it was not. Okay, just uh, try to get my pieces over. Rather need to bring the rook. Queen f3, bishop e4. Oh, no, not that, but bishop g4 is like good. Bishop e4 loses, but bishop g4 just wins. Okay, there is a little check. I mean, I can start with like uh, rook c2 as well. Just kind of pinning him down. King d1, queen d4 is nice. I mean, there. Cannot draw the arrows, sorry. Uh, you'd think it would be easy to draw arrows and play chess um, in the same time. I had no idea how wrong you were. Okay, I don't see how he's defending against this. Oh, he takes. That's a queen. And then that's a double attack. Really nice. Oh, I've got 20 seconds. Maybe an idea to start pre-moving at this point. Let me pre-move queen e2. Pre -move, uh, I could have played rook c8 as well, but this should be fine. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Bro, what is this guy doing? Oh my god. <laughs> this guy is hitting me with a disrespect back. He's not making a move. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Lol. 
<laughs> I mean, I started disrespecting him. I could have like made it, but I was like, let's have a little bit of fun. But I guess we pay the bill now, so fine by me. You will just wait one minute. Yeah, I figured, but <laughs> I thought we could do something cool, but it ended up backfiring. Imagine he played his pawn to a6 and you flagged. Wait, what? How would that even happen? <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, well, anyways. By far, the weirdest game that um, I've had in a while. But, got it done with some little tactics, okay? I guess is that uh, H5 was a little bit inaccurate over there instead of um, just playing H6. But we'll see. Definitely very strange opening. And I'm pretty sure this guy is rage quitting because, as I said, he was one game away from uh, 2100. So this is like heartbreaking for him. I mean, still pretty early in the States. I mean, not like early, it's like. Um, maybe evening, I think, somewhere around that at the time we're streaming this, so he has plenty of time to grind, but he won't lose any points, though. Wait, he will lose points. What are you, like, even talking about? You always lose points when you disconnect. Like, what What, what are you, like, even saying? 4.30, yeah, 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 so, like, kind of evening. Isn't that, like, evening-ish? Like, what would you guys say 4.30 is? What do we do against the kid as 2k rated players? We do Jubava London. That's what we do. I mean, yeah, we play London against everything and Jubava London against the kid. That's like my favorite. But you can do the positional setup as well. Maybe four. We've got like many videos already in the rating climb on YouTube. So if you're new, I don't know, guys, just in case you're new on the channel, which is probably not very likely, but just saying. You can check out the full uh, London system rating climb. Got maybe 40 videos already facing all kinds of different setup in all kinds of different uh, rating ranges. So there is that. <laughs> you know what to do from there. Mm, is the five minutes, five second increment pool better than the three minutes pool? It's like the same. It's just that you get more time. There's like, there's no difference in pool between like different uh, blitz. Uh, time controls. It's a difference between Blitz and Rapid, because in Rapid, it's much easier. Isn't that an official speedrun account? Then he shouldn't lose points. I mean, he's losing them in, like, the first place, but he will get refunded, like, after we're done. So, I just meant in, like, general, not against my specific account. I meant about, like, rage quitters. Uh... Yeah, during winter, getting uh, dark early evening. Yep, 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 yep. Four thirty is evening. That was a good call by me. Proud of it. Okay. Enough with the nonsense. Let's see. What can I like even uh, have done better in this game? So, uh, let me make it in a way so that you can see. And play knight f6. So g4 was like super weird. That kind of threw me off a little. I played h5, which was, yeah, typical. Okay, I'm like minus one, but I couldn't make a move. Oh, now I know what it is. The computer doesn't even care about a pawn, dude. Wait, what? Oh, there's knight d4. I thought computer just wants to play for compensation, which is actually not bad. And then, I mean, just play e5 or whatever. But computer finds this trick. So he takes and then plays queen a5. And then just wins back. The bishop, but is like the most important piece on the board. And just like dominating. So yeah, I missed that. So I found find it like a bit hard to play. Play queen a5. Then, I mean, rook c8. It's like still... Not making like super terrible moves, but a bit, uh, a bit, a bit weird for no reason. And now I found this nice support here and like, he took it in like 
two seconds. The guy was like, oh, that's a free bishop. Let me take. <laughs> Minus six. <laughs> wow. Uh, I didn't get an email from Twitch when you started stream. All settings okay? Wait, are there like any settings that should be made? I wasn't, uh, I wasn't like aware of that. I thought that you just like either automatically get them or if you don't get them, it's because of Twitch. I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know. I'm like not a tech guy. You guys know better for sure. Doesn't seem like I'm much of a chess guy either. Like the way I play this opening, but okay, you forget about that part, so. Let's uh, focus on what I did. So apparently ch checking. Oh, there was bishop c2. Oh my god. I didn't even consider because I saw knight f3 completely winning. And I was like already mentally satisfied with my idea. But uh, yeah, then I was like, okay, bishop c2 just easy win. Imagine you plays queen c1, you take one f3 and... What are we even talking about here? The queen, 92, win the rook, win the house, basically. Yeah, that would have been a little bit better, but even the way we played it, I don't think was bad, like, at all. It's, like, minus X, so. Got a free knight and uh, got the pieces in. The rest was pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, okay, okay. Looks like we are gonna be starting with the black pieces. And what better way to do so than... Playing a Karo Khan and already dealing with a very suspicious line. And since this is pretty weird, I think in general with pretty weird lines, you can play pretty weird moves. I mean, we've got to like take our opponent's style and beat him with his own weapons. Like that's how a um, true chess player thinks. So we're just going to fianchero. And now it's important not to blunder the pawn. And I think for that reason, I'm just gonna, yeah, play a little bit of an ambitious move. And then I think I'm gonna go even more aggressive and open up this square for the knight. Thinking to go for like e5 right now. Question is whether he can anytime uh, sacrifice the pawn with f5. That's like the only thing that's kind of annoying for me at least but it doesn't seem to be all that great uh, also by the way I think I might have forgot about this but uh, e5 was uh, was also a move yeah I think I played uh, yeah this is pretty standard anyways and now uh, yeah I can do knight f6 and castle I'm still like wondering whether e5 is a move but it just feels a bit a bit sketchy now, so I think I'm just gonna do knight f6 and castle. Okay, opponent playing pretty fast, so we'll need to adapt to that. I'm wondering whether c4 is a move in this position. Um, yeah, it's clearly just uh, preparing g4 and trying to play on the king side. c4, e5, which is, yeah. The move that's kind of bothering me a little bit. That's why probably it's not uh, so great right now. Or for rook b8, b5, c4. Maybe that's uh, something we can try. It's not an easy position to play, I've got to say. I'm just going to fianchetto for now and then play rook c8. His pawn uh, look a little bit scary though. I think we can uh, both agree on that. Plays f5. I didn't want to do like c4. It feels like time to do some counter play. Could also play like knight d7. I think knight d7 is a nice move controlling e5 push. Maybe then thinking to sacrifice the pawn with c4. Queen c7 could also be an idea. Obviously not now. Um, so yeah, thinking whether we should uh, really consider the pawn sack or not. 
I feel like b5 is a move as well. I think I'm just gonna go b5, c4. Like, no need to really sacrifice just yet. I'm gonna play for bishop h6. I think. I've got an option to play c3. Takes, takes, queen e3. Ah, then there is queen b6. I think I like c3 here. It's a pretty odd move, but it's like very concrete because he has to guard uh, the bishop. And okay, queen f4 or queen g5. Yeah, looked a bit strange. And he has to play queen c1, which is, I think, a good sign for us. Maybe just queen c7 is a nice move. I can also check. But I like this. Hitting the knight. Bishop g7, I'll have to take with the king, I think. This is under attack. Plays knight e2. We can protect the pawn. I guess we're gonna just uh, do that. It's a pretty tricky position because I can easily get mated in uh, in a blitz game here. It's definitely easier to play uh, for white. But... Yeah, we'll see. Rook b1. Thinking knight e5, just exchanging pieces is usually helpful for the defending side. Taking with a queen, obviously, so we're going to centralize and have everything protected. Controlling d4 as well. Okay, now this is pretty safe. I think it's safe to say. Hope we don't get mated in like a few moves. Queen e3 has to be played and then maybe bishop a6. Uh, bishop a6 d4, I think I've got to play uh, maybe rook c d8 or rook f d8. Which rook? I feel like this one has to be used. Maybe I could be wrong on that. I think I'm going to use this one and if queen f3 or something like that, there's maybe f6. So that the f file is safe. And I can use this rook to like infiltrate if needed. Queen b6, yeah, I saw that in advance. There is still 94 as a strong uh, counter attack, it seems. Takes and then trade queens. The pawn is protected. Yeah, I think I want to do that. If we trade queens, that's like really nice. Hey, thank you for the sub, uh, queen. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we can prove the sub was worth it in this game, but most likely not. But I guess we'll see. <laughs> I could just play rook b8 maybe there and be better, but this endgame felt very interesting. Has to trade and. I've got ideas, maybe sack, the pawns connected could be pretty dangerous. Could also do like, uh, oh, he goes for the bishop trade. I can try to keep. Huh. Well, well, well. This is pretty odd. I'm just going to play rook b8. Looks like a weird move, but we're gonna get it. Trying to activate. Yo, Mr. Birdfish, welcome to the stream. How are you? We've got this as an idea. He's gotta play King F2. That's just like a must at this point. Wait, so B3 now. I mean, it's like really kind of 50-50 between a win and a draw at this point. He has to take with a rook, that's for sure. Taking with a pawn is a mistake as my rooks are very strong. Yeah, take this. This pawn is a bit annoying for him, however, uh, not clear how uh, decisive it will turn out to be. I've got a threat to do this and rook b2, so rook c1 is mandatory here. Yeah, I'll play C2 next, try to keep the pawn. When he chases, I go there. So maybe H4 is strong move now. H4 is strong there, kind of drawing on the spot, I think. Oh man, close one. Will we do a reaction stream to the chess boxing? No, I don't think we're gonna do that, guys. <laughs> Gotta focus on the like match itself, no reaction. 
Yeah, H4, finally he finds. Pretty unlucky. I guess, I don't know, maybe I should still be quite careful here. I guess I can still lose this position if I'm not uh, in the right mindset. I mean, there's a check again, forcing king f3. If I take, he takes that, I keep checking. Yeah, I'll just check him again. I guess repetition is fine. I mean... I had played for a win. <clears throat> Gotta speed up though. 20 seconds. I'm gonna win a pawn in the rook end game. It's drawn, but uh, wait, so he does that? What on earth? Gotta take there. Still, I think I'm just gonna win his pawn there on f6, but uh, if I'd be wrong on that. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, give me that. G7, H6. Keep everything defended. Okay, okay, give some checks. Oh. Yeah, not sure like what's the winning plan here, but I guess just flagging my opponent should do it. Here, rookie six. He's pretty slow, so should be relatively easy job. Yeah, I mean, got an ugly win, but yeah, I don't know. It really felt like I um, should have won this game, like, easily. Mm, yeah, like, again, we can do a little bit of analysis um, on this game. Yeah, win is a win. That's true. It was a very hard, uh, yeah, working win. So, okay. What happened in the opening? Like, I wasn't super sure about the opening. Yeah, I should have probably just gone uh, d4, c5, knight, c6, why play g6? I really played a pretty dumb move and then I didn't follow it up uh, as I wanted, it seemed. I didn't really like my position that I got from the opening. I had to play b6 because of b5, I get like a4, and that was really an issue for me. We cannot play a6, so that's why I played only b6. And then, okay, like, uh, he got in this setup. Apparently, f5 was a weak move. I played knight d7, which was nice, fighting for the dark squares. b5, apparently, computer, not such a huge fan of it, but... I feel like once, once I got in c3, that was a nice move. Apparently, I don't know, computer's got, like, mixed feelings of it. Hmm. Was a pretty was a pretty complicated game, I've gotta say. And definitely I was happy to see Queen E3. Queen to B6, because we just get rid of the Queen, so usually it's gonna be harder for us to get made it, which is definitely something I was looking for. And look, yeah, after Queen C1, it felt like this should be relatively decent for me. I play like B4, protecting the pawn. Reinforcing everything there. 95, somewhat reasonable. Played queen e3 and now, uh, yeah, rook fd8. Felt like the right choice. Queen b6 and now, yeah, I found a good move, knight d4. That was a pretty strong counterattack. Going rook to b8 uh, was still like okay, as you can see, but definitely I was uh, giving white the uh, momentum. But now after knight d4, I'm definitely threatening uh, like knight d2 and the four queen g3 in case he goes on h1. So he had to enter this endgame, which I suspected must be better for us, but apparently I was wrong. 
After E5, I played top line rook B8, which is a weird move, but my thinking process behind it, okay, maybe it doesn't really matter that much. It's probably everything is the same here. I was thinking that if we take and we play rook B8, his king is maybe like kind of quicker. Probably it's not really the such a good reason, but it felt to me like, okay, I wanted the rook on B8 anyway, just so I can have ideas in the future to sacrifice this pawn and try to use the c1 to advance and now if it was important to play king h6 to activate going for king g8 is yeah just getting yourself into a weird mating net for no reason so that was obviously a nice move and we have this idea in the end games and yeah after the trade might have rushed with this b3 move i can definitely cook him up a little bit with this and then King g6 and just pick up f6. I actually, yeah, in, in an o OTB game, probably I wouldn't rush with that. Just play rook b6, g5, king g6, win the pawn, and um, yeah, just wait a little bit before breaking for you. Don't have to break immediately, but okay. I was already like really down on time, so speeding the game was definitely something that I was looking for. And here I missed strong move king g5. In fact, um, yeah, just getting what I wanted previously, but um, without letting him to play h4. Because really what I missed in this position also, yeah, by the way, I missed uh, king g5 again. For some reason, I thought uh, that uh, getting the pawn to c2 is nice. But that was mainly because I was getting hyped after I saw this line. And I thought this should be good for black, but obviously has h4, so... That was uh, a missed win there by me, just king g5, his rook is passive, and we win this pawn, and normally this should be a draw, but it feels like my king is able to infiltrate on h4, and that may cause him to lose all the kingside pawns, which is not very common for the uh, for the rook end games on 3 against 2, because most likely we're going to trade these two pawns. So rook d2, yeah, then I kind of was at this point where I know I've got a draw in the pocket, but I saw that after g5, we're most likely gonna get a position like this, where I can at the very least check him and take on b3, pick up one of the pawns. It's still a draw, but at least you can play it on for a bit. So I think this is the right mindset when you're not risking anything. Okay. I just ended up Dirty flagging him in a um, dead draw endgame, but okay, I mean, <laughs> that's like a uh, part of the game. It was like even like very tricky to do anything since if I try to get my king out, he's always uh, <clears throat> ready to try to win that h6 pawn, which is uh, yeah, pretty dangerous with uh, such pawn on uh, h5. So, 